You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Ball. What's up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB here, the Diecast News Guy, bringing you guys with another NASCAR Authentics Wave Review. And this is going to be on the 2019 Wave 3 official review my thoughts and opinions so guys you guys probably already might know what's in this wave considering that this wave was already leaked thanks to uh the release of the uh of the rigs town junior fifth third bank ford mustang diecast that is available at the daytona 500 wave which is now available at walmart's and also at the uh roush fenway racing store and yeah, like I just said, I did uh, mention and talked briefly about this wave on NASCAR Diecast News 209, but this is going to be my full, full out uh, opinionated video of my, you know, my, uh, of what I got to say and what cars I'm really looking forward to in this wave. Speaking of that, guys, I mean, this is the wave, guys. This is the, uh, we got 10 new cars to be talking about, but two of them are trucks, guys. Yes, this is the wave right here that we finally got, the 164 trucks. So without further ado, let's go get this show on the road, guys. I am ready to show you guys these trucks. So here we go. The first truck that we got released um, officially, along with the Daytona 500 truck, here it is, guys. We got Matt Crafton's 2018, no, it's not 2019, but it's, you know, it, it is what it is. His 2018 and number 88 Menards Ideal Door Garage Doors, uh, Ford F-150. And it looks like this has the upgraded, uh, the, the updated, uh, Ford F-150, uh, grills as well. So that looks really nice. I mean, um. Uh, you know me, I'm a big fan of the Menard scheme, so this is going to be a great addition to go along with your Simon Pagano 164 Menards and the Ryan Blaney uh, 164 Menards. I mean, I'm hoping uh, we, we can get like an Xfinity Menards diecast as well. Well, we can't get it with Brandon Jones considering it got canceled. But back to this truck, guys. Oh my god, I'm so, I mean, I'm really glad that this is uh, made, this made it as one of the first 164s. I mean, it looks like we're going to get all Thor Sport cars. I mean trucks eventually and probably uh, in all the waves very soon but we only got two right now but this is a great start and I mean heck guys the first time ever we see Matt Crafton in the 164 line so I mean this guy is a veteran in the camp in the well I said well what was known as the camping world truck series but now the Gander outdoor truck series but that's another reason why it's a 2018 car because because of that sponsorship right there but I can't complain. This truck looks absolutely amazing. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Menards scheme at all. So, great addition to start off with the 164 trucks. Definitely is going to be a hot seller for sure. And the next truck that I got to talk about that's going to be another hot seller. Uh, this one is a uh, is going to be another exclusive, um, just like the Crafton truck. This is the first ever outdoor win that is going to be made in the 164. We got Chase Briscoe's number 27 Ford F-150 uh, built Ford Tough truck. Wow. And yes, this is the race version, guys. This is the truck that uh, he only ran. Um, it's considered that you know Chase Briscoe had a really uh, tight, had a really limited schedule in the truck series and the Xfinity series. So to see him go out and win in his only truck start for last year, Wow, I mean that the first of all that was really impressive and um, Lionel is making the 124 of this version But I didn't think they were gonna do this in the 164 But they did guys and plus this is a Thor sport truck after all so you know that licensing really is working well But man, I mean I know we didn't get a good glimpse of the other side But I'm sure the other side is gonna be just completely damaged and covered in dirt Plus this is a white truck so we will be seeing the dirt on this car very closely I mean it's not gonna have you know the treaded tires and all that considering it's the 164 but you know you, you cannot complain with these 164 trucks man i mean we waited a long time for this and uh, i know that there's gonna be some decal screw-ups but that's standard for lionel but i mean you cannot complain i mean i, I did that i'm so glad that lionel was able to you know just make this happen and it's just probably one of the few reasons why i'm very hopeful with lionel racing considering you know um everything that they have done you know and everything that they have mishandled lately this really just makes up for everything they did guys i mean what better way to get another 164 truck in this wave to make it the eldora race win which is you know probably the biggest trucks rate the biggest truck race that we got <laughs> i mean that, that when you think about the truck series you think about eldora because everybody talks about that race so pretty appropriate to have this truck in this uh, wave and i'm hoping uh since now they got 164 trucks going on maybe we'll see the eldora race winner 
in every um, for every year, guys, for NASCAR Authentics. I'm hoping so. I mean, we do the Daytona 500 cars, so maybe this is the start of something new, guys. I'm hoping so, but definitely a must get for sure, guys. Definitely. And now back to on some more uh, exclusive 164s, guys. Uh, we got to talk about uh, Ryan Blaney, guys. This is the Charlotte Roval win. This is also uh, his first official uh, win with Team Penske. I mean, I'm not counting the dual win, guys, because that was technically not a actual race. But this was the first time he ever won with the Team Penske um, sponsorship, if you want to exclude the dual win. But... Yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean, <laughs> you guys already saw my reaction on uh, Twitter and Instagram. That was one hell of a finish. I mean, I know it sucked for, for the Jimmy Johnson fans and myself being a Truex fan. But thankfully, that was a Blaney fan as well, guys. Cause, man, this this car looks amazing. I mean, I mean, the emoji doesn't look too bad now, but it, it still is pretty atrocious. But uh, I have also noticed something about this car as well. It's just me, or this car does not have the day glow numbers or the day glow um, rims. If that's the case, then um, heck, that's freaking awesome because that is something I did complain about, even though it was accurate. But judging by this picture, I think that's how the car was in uh, the race in the race uh, version, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or Lionel screwed it up, but, I mean, heck, if Lionel screwed it up, I mean, I could really care. It looks so much better. <laughs> if only they could just get rid of that stupid emoji, but, I mean, it is accurate, though, but this is going to be a really cool race win, guys. You guys know I'm a big Ryan Blaney fan, and any guys out there who are a big Ryan Blaney fan, and if you guys are a big fan of that Charlotte Robo race, which was probably one of the most exciting finishes that we had from last year, along with the Chicagoland win, I mean, it's a pretty cool that Lionel was able to get both the race wins, um, for two of the most exciting finishes that we got in NASCAR Authentics for this year. I mean, I say it's a great start already. I mean, who knows what's going to happen next, guys, for with the race wins. But um, I know a lot of people are going to complain, oh, it's 2018 race wins. We need 2019. Lionel's not that fast, guys, all right? It takes time to make the diecast. So this is the best we got. But, you know, like all the other NASCAR fans, are just going to complain about something. But I'm not going to complain about this car. This car looks really nice. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Blaney fan. This is a really nice looking car and glad to see that we got a raced version uh, since NASCAR Authentics did miss out on his first win for the Pocono race. But um, luckily we got that in the 164 for the Gold Series. All right, so next up we got uh, this car might look pretty familiar if you guys already, got, uh, already saw my review on this car. So I'm definitely not getting this car since I already have it. But this is the first ever Ford Mustang diecast that we got released for NASCAR Authentics for 2019 and it is Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s fifth third bank Ford Mustang so as you guys see right there we got the big spoiler and the big grill and uh, from what I've seen I actually got some updates now that uh, the Chevrolet Camaros and the Toyota Camrys will not have the updated spoilers guys um, since those since Lionel's not going to make an updated mold on those cars yet so that's gonna be unfortunate but so yeah it looks like the Ford Mustang diecast could be the only accurate diecast um, with this arrow kit, which is pretty unfortunate, but I can see what Lionel's going to try to do. But, you know, they've changed the spoiler so many times on the mold, so I don't know why they decided not to do it for this year. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's just a rumor I've heard, but I don't know. That, man, until I hear any confirmation from Lionel, then maybe I won't say anything else about it. But back to the Ford Mustang diecast, guys. This car is also going to be available in the liquid color variants, which, you know, I really do like the liquid color blue. But this one, I mean, I'm not really digging it. I mean, it looks really off considering that this car already has some blue on it um i don't know that, that i mean that, that this it's a probably good example why i don't like special finishes um because man the, i mean the fifth third bank color looked really nice but with this liquid color on it i mean it looks uh i don't know it looks pretty bad <laughs> i don't know i mean I, I, that's just my opinion but still could be an exclusive car and you know how the liquid color cars are they're going to sell out pretty quickly and some Joe Schmoe's going to buy it and sell it on eBay for, you know, twice as much as worth. But these cars are worth a lot so that when you get the liquid colors. So I do understand that. <laughs> I just had to say that because, man, that's one thing that irks me about um, these NASCAR Thanos cars. You know, you got those people out there that, you know, just buy these cars in bulk and they, um, you buy, they buy them for five bucks and each because that's a retail price. And then they flip it and put it on eBay for like 20 bucks. They're already doing that with the, with the trucks already, guys. I mean, it's insane. So get them while they can. <laughs> but yeah, great additions. Glad to see some Ford Mustang diecast in this wave. Uh, you can also get this car, like I mentioned, at the Roush Fenway Racing Store and also in the 2019 Daytona 500 wave, which is available now. All right, and we got to talk about the Kyle Larson 2018 um, 
I'm a Sadisti Solar, but this is the Credit One Bake Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Well, we can just uh, you know, put a little X mark where that DC Solar logo is because <laughs> they're pretty irrelevant now. But this is another car that I just recently reviewed that's also on the Daytona 500 Wave. So, I mean, majority of these cars I'm about to show you are already released, guys, in the Gold Series and also in the Daytona 500 Wave. So, I mean, looks like Wave 3, uh, I'm going to be, I um, mean, it's going to be slow for me. I mean, it looks like we're not going to get Wave 3 until probably next uh, month since Wave 2 is probably going to be out for this month by how things are going since Wave 1's out and the Daytona 500 Wave. But, yeah, back to the Credit One Bank car. I mean, I did mention this on my review on this car. Um, I do like the blue on this, but I've seen a lot of people say they prefer the 2018 version better. But, um, you know, this car looks really nice. I mean, it could use a little more white, but I still stand by my opinion that uh, I really am digging the blue on this car. So, really nice and hoping we can see this uh we can see good old lightning larson in victory lane very soon i mean if he doesn't uh you know choke and lose the lead again <laughs> uh i'm sorry i just had to say that because after what happened in atlanta i mean i mean man I feel sorry for all the larson fans out there he's gonna get there eventually guys next up we gotta talk about the x ex lata car <laughs> uh if you guys saw rob's review on the uh, jet on the i I almost called this a Jeff Gordon car. Oopsie daisy. This is William Byron's 2019 Exalta Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Wow, that was already a fail waiting to happen. But, I mean, what can I say, guys? This is, I mean, as long as you don't get that screwed up Exalta logo that uh, Rob got on his review. I mean, I, I'm going to be looking out for this car. I mean, guys, if you guys end up finding this car and they, if they uh, screw up the, uh, the, the um, if you guys end up getting the uh, screwed up Exalta logo, <laughs> then uh, feel free to post a picture of it because I'll be looking for it as well, guys, because, you know, the Lionel fails are pretty hilarious when it comes to that. I mean, still is the funniest fail that we ever got from Lionel Racing by far. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, if you guys uh, have missed out on this car already, especially with last year's, I mean, this is the updated version. Go ahead and get it. I mean, definitely a must get. If you got last year's, then maybe it'll be a pass. But, I mean, this is a hardcore William Byron car to get for sure. Um, I mean, great addition right here for... Um, for the Willie Byer fans. All right, we got also our Daytona 500 champion. We got Denny Hamlin. This is yet another car I reviewed. So that's also in the Daytona 500 wave. So yeah, like I just mentioned, but really nice addition that we got. I mean, we got a new paint scheme for Denny Hamlin. And yes, uh, he is running the same scheme with the other three cars. So the Fright, the Ground, and the hall, and the Office cars are all going to look like this. Man, are we ever going to get back to the days where he's going to have different colors? Doesn't look like it, but thank God that none of those cars have made into NASCAR Authentics, just only the Express cars. But back to this paint scheme, guys, I really do love this. I mean, I did mention this on my diecast review, and um, like if you guys are all looking forward to all these diecast reviews, uh, feel free to go ahead and look at the uh, diecast reviews playlist. That's where all these will be at, or look at the suggested videos as well, um, depending what the YouTube algorithm algorithm. Um, recommends because <laughs> it is very inconsistent but yeah i'm getting a lot of jason leffler vibes from this car i mean feel free to comment below if you guys have any of the comments to share about this danny hamlet car because a lot of people got some really strong opinions about this paint scheme uh, i'm sure david land likes this car as well since you know purple fever <laughs> um that, all right so we got uh well we got like a few more of the cars to show you uh let's see we got uh mr alex bowman's number 88 Vavilene chevrolet camaro zl1 this is yet another car that has also released in the daytona 500 wave which i'm about to do a review on very soon so stay tuned for that guys i know a lot of people are looking forward to me to review this car but uh if i just say it short guys i mean the Vavilene schemes I mean, you can't hate them, guys. I mean, every time they come up with a Valvoline scheme, whether you were a fan of Mark Martin or Johnny Benson or even Scott Riggs or Patrick Comprantier or A.J. Allmendinger, I mean, all those guys had some really great paint schemes, and Alex Bowman is a great uh, representation of this car as well. Oh, I can't forget Dale Jr. as well, because Dale Jr. drove a Valvoline throwback car. <laughs> I mean, the one and only great Dale Jr. But, yeah, the Valvoline sponsorship... Uh, so glad that they have stayed with Henry Motorsports for quite a while now, and in NASCAR in general. One of the most long-time loyal sponsors that we got in NASCAR, and glad to see that um, they're still making some great paint teams because this one is really cool, and it's a shame it got canceled last year, but glad to see it in NASCAR Authentics form, and also in the Gold Series form as well. All right, I think we got one more car to, car to, be, uh, one more car to be talking about, as I got a little tongue-tied right there. 
we got uh, Kyle Larson's DC Solar Vegas Strong card that he drove at the 2018 Vegas Playoff Race. Now, this is a really cool car. And, yes, it does have the playoff emoji and the uh, playoff uh, sp green splitter and spoiler. So, you can definitely tell this is a playoff car. But, you know, the, the playoff green really works well with this car, if I do say so myself. As you guys see right there, there's uh, th this is really cool. I mean, even though DC Solar is pretty irrelevant now after what happened, but that was cool that they were able to, um, you know, pay tribute to uh, that tragedy that happened with the Vegas shooting in 2017. I mean, still, I mean, it, it, that was just really great of them to, um, you know, so, to, um, to support all those uh, people that lost their lives, unfortunately, to that uh horrendous shooting so i mean god bless those people and um it was cool to have all their signatures and all the people that um you know you know race supports and um and just send all their prayers to them so i mean um yeah it, it's uh, this was a really nice looking car um i thought they were going to make this race version by how the renders looked <laughs> but uh, i guess it's not i mean it would have been pretty cool but still can't complain though i mean this is uh i, I mean I, i'm loving all the dc solar cars that we got from last year um, well, this actually, I believe this is the second time we've got DC Solar car released, and probably going to be the final time, considering that DC Solar is, you know, banned from NASCAR. <laughs> okay, considering that the FBI just, you know, put a rampage on their ass, but yeah. <laughs> well, there goes my uh, first uh, cussing comment on this video, and probably the last one I'll do for quite a while. But um, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed all this uh, stuff I had to talk about of Wave 3. If I had to say, um, you know, it, it, is this my favorite wave that we got so far? Absolutely. I mean, Wave 1 and Wave 2 was, I mean, Wave 2 is probably my least favorite, and then Wave 1 is right behind this, but Wave 3, definitely, guys. I mean, probably considering it about those trucks, because we've been waiting for 164 trucks for so long, so yeah. I'm on the hype train, guys. This is my favorite Wave, guys. I recommend getting all these cars, and if you guys have, I, I mean, I, long story short, if you got all all the cars from the Daytona 500 Wave, then get the cars that weren't in the Daytona 500 Wave that are in this Wave. If that makes any sense to you. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this NASCAR Authentics uh, Diecast Wave review. Uh, I got other videos to plan to, to do on all these other cars very soon. And another Diecast News episode. So thank you guys for your continued support. I am just, uh, what, like 10 subscribers away from uh, 2,900. So let's get it going, guys. Let's get that like button and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. And I will catch you guys on another NASCAR Authentics related review.